Hey guys, David East here. Today we're going to be making a single page website with flat UI. The single page website we're going to be creating is for a company. I work at a company called Aspenware and they already have a website. So we're going to create a fictitious company based upon that called Flatspinware. So I'm going to be using Visual Studio 2012 Express for this, but we're just writing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, so you don't need a full-blown IDE. You can use Sublime Text or any other code editor that you want to use. So since we're making a single page application, let's start off with a checklist of things that we're going to need. First, we're going to need a header, and this will contain all the navigation points for our page. Then we're going to have our main section, and this is where we're going to describe the company and maybe a cool little slogan that summarizes what the company's all about. Then we're going to have an about section, and that's going to provide a little bit more detail about the company. After that, we'll make the team section, and that'll highlight members of the company. Then we'll make the contact section, which will just be a little form. And lastly, we'll have the footer, which will also have the navigation links, as well as some social network icons. So since Flat UI is based on Twitter Bootstrap, we can go to the Bootstrap documentation. And within the documentation, we can go to the components section and look at the navbar. So we're going to want a navbar similar to this for our header. So let's copy in the code in the example and paste it into our page. So now that the code's copied into our page, let's take a look and see what it's doing. We have the navbar header div, which contains the hidden collapse button that will only show on a mobile or a tablet. And then we also have the brand, which for us will be called Flatspinware. Then we have some links with some sub navigation, and we also have a form. And we don't need any of those, so we can just get rid of them. And now in this unordered list, we have some links that'll be aligned to the right. One of them is a drop down, which we're not going to have any sub navigation, so we can get rid of this. And now we're just left with basic links. So we're going to have one for home and that'll be the main section. Then we'll have one for about, we'll have one for team, and we'll also have one for contact. Now let's check this out in the browser. So here we are in the browser and we have flat spinware right here and we have home, about, team, contact. So this looks exactly like what we're trying to achieve. We have a full-fledged flat style navigation bar out the box thanks to flat UI. And it's responsive too. With this Chrome extension called Responsive View, I can click on it and I can open up a separate window that'll have the dimensions of a mobile phone. So as you can see here, this looks different than our page below. If we click on the button, it shows all of our home about team and contact. And if we click back, it collapses. So this will work great on any mobile device. So now we have our header done, but there's still a little problem. Since it's a header, it should probably be within a header tag to be a little bit more semantic. So we'll collapse this nav right here. We'll have this header and we'll paste it in. So back in our checklist, we've completed header. So now let's focus on the main section. So to keeping up with being semantic, we'll use a section tag. And inside of the section tag, we'll create a jumbotron. And a jumbotron is a new class to Bootstrap 3 that basically takes the place of a hero unit. Inside of this jumbotron, we're gonna have an H1 and we're gonna give the title of Flatspinware. And we'll have a P tag below. And the P tag will have text from my company's website. And it says, we at Aspenware create software that people want to use. And we'll change that to Flatspinware. So here in Chrome, we can see that we have the Jumbotron. It says the big Flatspinware and the subtitle as well. And this is kind of looking a bit like a documentation website. There's nothing too special about it. So we should spice it up just a little bit. And a good way to spice it up is, is instead of having this white background, let's change it to something else. Maybe like the midnight blue color provided with flat UI. So back in Visual Studio, let's go to the CSS folder over here and let's create a new style sheet. And we'll just call it flatspinware.css. And inside of this body tag, we're going to use the background attribute and we're going to set it to the midnight blue color, which is 34495E. And now we'll link it in below flat UI. And back on our page, we can see that we have the midnight blue color as the background, but there's still a little bit of a deal. The jumbotron is a little white and it's kind of glaring. And we have these rounded corners on the nav bar that don't totally lock it to the side. So let's fix that. So back in our flat spinware CSS file, I'm going to paste in these two helper classes. One's called text-centered and another's no-margin. And they do exactly what they sound like they do. One will center the text of any element and the other one will remove any of the margin. And these are helpful down the line if you just want to plug in something and remove the margin. Now, if you're going to end up putting no margin on a ton of the elements, you're probably going to want to bake that into the style itself. But this can be really helpful when you're trying to get something developed quickly. So below the body, I'm going to target the nav bar. 
and I'm going to set its border radius to zero. And ideally, you'd want to use all the vendor prefixes for this, but since this will work in Chrome, I'm not going to add all that just to make the tutorial a bit quicker. And we also wanted that Jumbotron to be the same color as the background, which is this midnight blue right here. So we'll create a class called Jumbotron Midnight. And within that, we'll set the background to the midnight blue. So back in our HTML, we're going to go down to our Jumbotron and we're going to add the Jumbotron Midnight class. And we're also going to add the text centered class to center up the text. So now back in our page, we can see that we no longer have the white Jumbotron, but it seems like our Jumbotron is missing. So what's going on here? Well, if I just highlight here on the page, we can see that we have Flatsman wear in our text and it's centered in the middle, but we can see that our text color is the same color as the background. So we need to change that. So back in the Flatsmanware CSS file, we're going to add the color for the body, and it's going to be the turquoise green from Flat UI. And we'll also add this to the Jumbotron Midnight as well. And some of you may be thinking right now, well, shouldn't we combine the body and Jumbotron Midnight class since they're doing the same thing? And usually I would say, yeah, we should definitely do that. But we kind of want Jumbotron Midnight to be a bit modular, and we don't want it to really be dependent on the body. And yeah, we could break up the body again into another selector, but we might want to put this Jumbotron Midnight class into a flat UI override style sheet that we can use in other applications. So for the meantime, I'm just going to keep them separate. So now on our page, we can see we have the turquoise green color and everything's looking pretty good. Let's try to see what it looks like in a responsive view. Well, we're having a bit of an issue here. We can see that it has to scroll over to get all flat spin wear in there. And that's because the H1 is so big. So we need to create a media query that'll control the size of the H1. So down at the bottom of flat spin wear CSS, we're going to create a media query. So to start off a media query, you have the at sign and then media. And then we're going to open and close some parentheses and some brackets. And inside of these parentheses, we need to specify when these styles are going to take place. So we want these styles to take place when there's a max width of 767 pixels. So what this means is, is that anytime we're on a screen that's below 768 pixels, we will hit these styles. And the significance of 767 pixels is, is that it will apply to tablets and below. So we're going to say anything in the Jumbotron that's an H1, set the font size to 31 pixels. So back in our page, let's load up a responsive view from Mobile Portrait. And we can see that our flat spinware fits in nicely. So now that we have our company title and our company slogan, let's add an image for the company. So within images, I made an image called mountains.png, and it's just simply a hastily made abstract image of a mountain. So now we can see that we have our hastily made abstract mountains, and let's check to see how they resize. And they also have some resizing issues, so let's go fix that. Now to fix the sizing issues, we actually don't have to break into a media query. Below body, let's select images, and we're gonna say the max width of the image is 100 percent and what this will do is is when the browser resizes the image will resize as well so let's put it back into the portrait view and as we can see our image has resized so now back up in our checklist we have the header and we have the main so let's work on the about section so we'll create another section again and we'll also create a div with a class of jumbotron and we'll also give it the jumbotron midnight and we'll also center its text. We'll provide an H1 and we'll say we make amazing things. Instead of our P tag, we'll have another saying. So now back in the page, let's scroll down and we have the beginning of our about section. And now below this Jumbotron, let's show why we really are so great. So we'll have another div with a class of Jumbotron, Jumbotron Midnight, text centered. And we're not going to use a heading or a P tag. We're going to leverage the images that Flat UI Pro comes with. So if we go to icons and then we go to PNG, we have a whole list of icons at our disposal. So we could create a little set of boxes with the icon centered in the middle and then a little something that relates to that icon. So if we scroll down, we can see that we have an icon called mountain.png. So I'm just gonna drag that into my page and I'm gonna wrap it in a div with a class of row. And this is a class provided by Bootstrap and it'll help us keep things in rows. So again, I'm going to create another div and I'm going to call it a class of showcase item. 
And I'm also gonna give it a class of call MD-4. And what this is, it's Bootstrap's grid system. It's similar to how you would say span four in Bootstrap 2.3. And this will allow it to be responsive. So we don't wanna do any styling to the column. So we're gonna to have to create another div inside the column and we're gonna call it showcase item box. And we'll add our image inside of there. And then we'll have a P tag and we'll say right on the doorstep of the Rockies. So now back in the page, we see we have our mountain and we have our saying right on the doorstep of the Rockies. So we're gonna need to add a couple more, but also I don't wanna just blending into the background of the page. I wanna provide a way to highlight these icons a little more. So let's provide a little box for it. So since we have this class of showcase item box and the class of showcase item, let's provide some styling for it. So we'll target showcase item and we wanna give it a height of 220 pixels because I want them all to be a standard height. And I'll give them a padding of two pixels just to give them a little space around the sides. And then we'll target the showcase item box inside of showcase. So we're gonna give the box a background of a dark gray, which is the asbestos color for flat UI. And then we're gonna change its color to be all white. And we're gonna give it padding of 40 pixels for some breathing room. And then we're gonna give it a height of 100% and a width of 100%, just so it conforms to the container above it, which is the showcase item. And we're also going to align the text to the center. So now on our page, we can see that we have our box with our icon and everything. And so now the next step to do is just add some more. But before we add any more, you might notice that there's this big gap here in the middle. And that's because there's a lot of margin and padding applied to the Jumbotron. So we can go to the style sheet and change that. So above the Jumbotron Midnight class, we'll add one for Jumbotron and we'll set its border radius to zero because even though we can't see it, there is actually a border radius being applied and we'll set the padding to zero. And next to both of these, we're saying exclamation mark important because we wanna make sure that actually gets applied. And you really wanna use this sparingly. It's not something that you wanna put next to everything. It can really cause a lot of problems, but in this case, it's very useful. And also on Jumbotron Midnight, we want to take its margin and set it to zero. So now back in our page, you can see that these are closer together, but this is all the way to the left and we kind of have this horizontal scrolling issue. And the reason why that is, is because we don't have a container div around our page. So below our header, we want to create a div and we're going to give it a class of container. And I'm going to take this closing div and copy it. And I'm going to go all the way to the bottom and where the last section is being closed out, I'm going to close out the div. So now that we have our container added, let's add more of these tiles. So let's copy the showcase item and paste it below. And we'll use a new icon called Spaceship and we'll paste in a new saying. And instead of MD4, let's actually use MD6. And we'll copy this again. And we'll change the icon to Skateboard and we'll paste in another saying and we'll change it from MD6 to MD2. So now back on our page, we can see that we have these two new showcase tiles and they actually respond pretty well. If we pull up a new responsive tab, we can see that they tile on top of each other. So this works great on a phone. So let's actually add another row as well. So since we're adding another row, let's create another div with a class of row and let's copy this showcase item from up here and put it down here. We'll keep the size of MD6 We'll change the icon to capital M magic and paste in a new saying. We'll copy the showcase item up here. We'll add the icon for a capital C card and also a new saying. And we'll just copy in one last one of column MD4 and we'll change it to the icon for brush and add the new saying. So now we have a nice little creative way for showing what the company's about through these icons and these sayings. And they also respond well on a mobile device. One thing you might be noticing right now is that things are kind of cramped. There's not a lot of space between flat spinware and these mountains or these mountains in the about section. And also it might be cool if the nav bar follows us down the page as we scroll. So in our CSS, let's change the nav bar to have a fixed position. And then since it's fixed, we're gonna have to give it 100% of width. And also while we're here, let's add a little bit of padding. So we don't want any on the top, but we do want a little bit on the sides. So back in the page, if we scroll down, our nav bar follows us. But as you can see that it's kind of hiding where our first title is. And that's because its position is fixed. So we're gonna have to add some padding to our sections. 
So below image, we could say section, and we could give it a padding top of 78 pixels. And the reason why it's 78 is because that's the height of the nav bar. So now back in our page, we can see that we have flat spinware right here. And then we also have some space in between the mountains and the about section. However, instead of using just section, because we might want to use section for something else, let's put some classes on these sections. So for this section, we're going to give it a class of panel as well for the about section. And back in our CSS file, instead of saying section, we're going to say dot panel. So consulting back to our checklist, we finished these first three. So now it's time to focus on the team. So we'll create another section, give it a class of panel. And just like always, we're going to create another Jumbotron. Inside of this H1, we're going to say we have amazing people. And we'll add our saying. And just like above, we were showcasing some of the things that makes our company so great. So now we want to showcase our people. So we could use the showcase tiles that we we're using above. So we'll create the Jumbotron Midnight Div. And we'll create our first row. And I'm going to paste in a tile. And this is a showcase item with a column of four. And it has a icon of support. And it's just a picture of someone with a support headset on. And we're going to give it a tag of Sally, the CEO. And since it's a column of four, we're going to do it two more times. And we'll just paste this row in again. So back in our page, we can see that we have these white lines around. And I'm not exactly sure why this is happening. So let's inspect the element. So let's go to our section class panel. And let's see what the match CSS rules are. And the first thing is we see our panel that we created, and that looks familiar. And below it, we see another class for panel, and that's in bootstrap.css. So the problem we're having here is that this panel inside bootstrap.css has a border. And so if we remove it, we can see it go away. So when you're deriving from Bootstrap, you have to be careful with the class names you use because you could easily overwrite a class or you could apply styling that you don't intend to have. So back in our style sheet, we'll change this to scroll panel and we'll update our elements accordingly. So on our page, we have everything the way we had it before. And if we scroll down, we see that we have amazing people and we have Sally, the CEO throughout the tiles. And she's just really the one woman show running flat spin wear right now. So we have one through four done. So let's focus on the contact section. So I'm going to collapse these scroll panels that are all the sections we've created before. And now we'll create the one for contact. So just like always, we're going to create our Jumbotron Midnight. We'll have an H1. And we're going to say, we love to talk. And we'll have our saying. And below this is where we're going to have our contact form. So below we'll have a div with the Jumbotron and Jumbotron Midnight. But we don't want our text centered. So we'll leave that helper class out. So inside of this Jumbotron, we're going to need to create another div to make our form responsive. And we're going to give it a class of call MD6. And inside here, we'll add our first form element. It's just an input with a type of text, a class of form control, and a placeholder of name. And we'll paste in one for email. And we'll paste in a text area as well that has three rows, a placeholder of add comment, and a class of form control. And then we're going to add a button. We're going to give it a class of BTN, BTN LG for large, and then BTN primary, and BTN embossed, which is a special class that the Flat UI Pro has that provides a nice little embossed line to the button. And then we're going to add another class called pull right, which will float it over to the right. And then we'll just give it a value of submit. So down to the bottom of the page, we have our, our title and our saying. But there is a bit of an issue. We don't really have this centered in the middle. So how can we fix that? Well, we can actually offset this form using the Twitter Bootstrap grid system and center it in the middle. To do so, where we have call MD6, we'll have another one. And we're going to call it call MD dash offset dash three. And what this will do is it'll add three columns offsetting this to the left and put it in the middle. So now back in the page, we can see that everything's nice and centered. But our submit button is kind of small and lame, and it won't be very enticing to click on a mobile device, or really any device for that matter. And the problem is, is we're already using the largest button that we have provided to us. So we could create our own large button class, or we could actually have this button span the width of this form. So back in the style sheet, let's add another helper class, and we're going to call it full width. And it's going to give a width, 
of 100%. So we'll add full width onto the submit button. And now back in our page, we can see that we have this big button. And then when it gets resized to a form, the user will most likely want to click it. So now we have one through five completed and we just need to work on a footer. So one of the amazing things about Flat UI Pro is, is that it comes with some great documentation. So now we're looking at a bottom menu. That's something that's already baked into the Flat UI framework. So this looks like something that could easily go at the bottom of our page. So let's inspect the element. And we see that we have a div with the class of bottom menu here. So if we just copy this as HTML, we can paste it into our page. And we're going to want to do this outside of the container. And where we have our brand right here, we're going to want to get rid of the class of FUI flat because that'll provide a nice little flat icon, but that's just not our brand. So we'll have flat spinware as our brand name. And here's our bottom links. So we can delete all but the top one and we'll get rid of the us for about and we'll copy this. We'll add one for home. We have the one for about, so we'll have team and contact. And below here is the social icon, so we'll just keep those in place. And one issue that we're going to run into is that this bottom menu is going to be too close to the contact form above it. So we can target our bottom menu and we can give it a margin top of let's just say 50 pixels for now. So back on our page at the bottom, we see that we have flat spinware, home, about, team, contact, and these cool little social icons on the bottom as well. So from here, we have a pretty awesome single page responsive website that didn't really take us that long to make with Flat UI Pro. However, there is one thing that's really missing, and that's the navigation. If I click about, it takes me home. If I click any of these, it'll take me home, but it's not actually taking me home. It's taking me to the top of the page because of the hash mark on the links. So we can write some jQuery that allow us to scroll to the appropriate part of the page when it's clicked. So in the JavaScript folder, we have a plugin called jQuery.scroll2.js. And we'll include that into our page. And we'll just add it under Bootstrap. And this plugin will allow us to scroll to a specific part of the page. So we'll create a script. Inside of the script, we'll create a self-invoking anonymous function. And we'll import jQuery. So before we can scroll to anything, we're going to have to add some IDs to our panels. So inside this scroll panel for home, we'll give it an ID of home. We'll give this one an ID of about, ID of team, and an ID of contact. So now I can select the contact section, and I can call the scroll to plugin. And when this page loads, it'll scroll me down to the contact section. Now, as you can see, that happened pretty fast. So we can take that piece of code and we can alter it. So when we click on home, it'll scroll to home, about to about, and the same for the rest of them. And we'll also want to apply it to the footer down here as well. So let's go to the footer and let's give it an ID. And we'll just say footer. And we'll go up to the nav bar and we'll give it an ID of nav bar. And we'll get rid of this code right here. And let's write a click handler for the nav bar. So we'll get the nav bar and on click, we'll find the LIA and we'll pass through a function. And the first thing we'll do is we'll see what's clicked. So we'll create a variable called clicked anchor and we'll wrap the, this keyword with jQuery. So now when we click on something in the header, we'll be able to get the specific element. And what would be nice is if that element had some metadata to tell us what section to slide to. So let's go up to our nav bar. And in these links right here, let's add a data dash attribute. And we'll just say data dash loc for loc. And then we can correspond each one to the ID of the scroll panel. And I know that these are similar. It's just the section in lowercase, but we could really change this to anything for the classes and it won't affect our presentation. So now that we have the data dash attribute, we can know what panel to scroll to. So we'll create a variable called panel to scroll to, and we'll create a jQuery selector. So we'll have a string that's the first pound sign to get the ID of the clicked anchor dot data, and we'll get loc. So just to show what this is doing, let's console.log the panel to scroll to. And using array notation, we'll pass through zero to just get the native element. So now on our page, I've pulled up Chrome developer tools. And when I click home, we get an element down here. 
And if we hover over it, we see that it's the home section. And if I click about, it's the about section. And the same would happen for team and contact. So now that we have the element, we can call the scroll to plugin on it. So we'll grab the panel to scroll to, and we'll call scroll to. So now we'll click about, and we get the about section. We'll hit team, takes us to team, as well as contact. And if we click home, it takes us all the way back home. However, down in our footer, if we click home, about, or any of those, it won't slide. So we need to apply it to that as well. So inside our footer, we'll just do the same thing as before. So we have the data dash loc for home, about, team, and contact. So down here in our JavaScript, we could just put a comma in for footer, but that would be for every LINA in footer. And we want to be a bit more specific. So we'll give an ID to this UL, and we'll just call it bottom nav. So we'll change the ID to footer to bottom nav. So back in the page, if I click on home in our footer, it takes us all the way back home. So in this tutorial, we created a responsive single page application using Flat UI Pro. Using Flat UI Pro, we had a nav bar already ready for us. We had a font we wanted to use. And using their colors, we were able to customize it to our own look. In part two of this series, we're going to focus on animation. Right now, when you come to the page, everything's static and it stays in the same place. But one of the popular trends is animating the text on the page. So when the user comes to this page, the Flatspinware logo can fade in from the left. And as we scroll down, other things will animate as they become in view. Now, as you can see, this website may need some polishing, but it's a really good foundation to start with. So just like always, if you have a question or want something explained a little bit more in detail, just leave a comment.